Hey, it's Dan, and in this video, we're going to talk to you about why you need to stop letting your ego take control of your finances. Hey everybody, it's Dan, hope you're well today. So in a slightly different car, using a slightly different phone holder, so if it's a little bit vibratory, uh, that's not a word, uh, then uh, I apologise. I'm in my wife's car today um, because we're going on a long distance journey and mine guzzles gas like you wouldn't believe. And we're trying to be a little bit greener. We're going to be selling that car and moving over to a, uh, something a little bit more efficient. Um, we want to be green, as you do. Anyway, let's talk about ego, let's talk about money. Uh, let's talk about wealth and uh, today's topic really comes from something that I saw a couple of days ago on Instagram and it said this and I've used this example before kind of um, but it says be the guy who's got a hundred grand in Bitcoin and a five thousand pound car rather than the guy who's got a hundred grand car and just five thousand in Bitcoin I was thinking about this recently because I was thinking about how many people go out and buy really nice cars I mean don't get me wrong I've had some really nice cars you know my most expensive car when I was 29 in fact uh, it was 42 and a half thousand pounds so a very nice Porsche 911 convertible beautiful car went like the clappers absolutely loved it ended up selling it for like 27 grand like two years later spent so much money on fuel obviously and, and for some reason tires <laughs> seem to go through quite a lot of rear wheel tires like eight uh, maybe it's the way I drove that car possibly um, but so don't get me wrong I've done it and you know what it was a mistake I shouldn't have done it I, I should have I should have put the money into FTSE 100 index funds you know in a pet as we used to be back then or in an ISA and obviously when cryptocurrency came out I mean hindsight's a wonderful thing if only I'd have put money into cryptocurrency as it came out Someone who's supposed to be on top of things and absolutely didn't, you know, we're not going to make that mistake twice. So with that in mind, it's like, you know, do I swap out my car and, and you know, I've got a hundred dollars down on a cyber truck, one of the Tesla ugly four wheel drives that nobody likes, one of the reasons I bought it, just to wind people up. Um, that's not out for another couple of years. When the time comes, I will buy that. But until then, I've got this a very nice car uh, but it's a big 4x4 four four with, I don't know, a 4.6 litre engine. It doesn't go like the clappers, it's just a big, heavy beast of a vehicle that guzzles up so much petrol, like to fill the tanks like £110. Uh, it guzzles so much petrol. I can't even go to Valencia and back without using, you know, over half a tank on that. To go to Valencia and back is like £60. It's ridiculous, it just costs so much money and guzzles so much petrol. And then obviously we're, we're heading towards a more green environment, aren't we? And we're, we're all thinking uh, about the planet a lot more. And at some point this car is just going to have to go. So then I'm like, okay, so what car do we want? Do we go and get a Lambo? Mm, probably not. It's only got two seats for now. At some point we might buy that car, but for now we, you know, fine. We need a we need a four seater at least, right? So then it's like, do we get a Range Rover, like a, a, a Vela or a Discovery? Or but it's just the same problem again. Or do we actually go the opposite way and go for something really much cheaper? Like my wife's car is a Dacia Duster. She absolutely loves it. It's cheap as chips to run. Uh, it gets about a trillion miles uh, to a full tank. We can go, you know, two and a half hours and back. We can drive for a full five hours. I don't even think we need to fill back up on that. It's so efficient is this car. And then I'm like, you know, maybe we just buy one of these. Buy a second hand one, pick it up for five or six grand. Um, sell mine, move any profits from mine over to crypto, uh, the money that we would save on, you know, we could, we could spend four or five hundred euros a month, pounds a month, euros, uh, every single month, and we could get a decent car, you could spend a thousand pounds, but I keep looking at that, and I keep playing this thing inside my head, be the guy with a hundred grand in Bitcoin and a five grand car. Not the guy with a hundred grand car and a five grand big car. It plays on my mind again and again. And we're in a very unique position because all our income comes from our assets already. So we're already doing quite well. But I want to move my uh, assets over, like non-property related assets, so that actually 
I could sell all the crypto and pay off all the mortgages. That's really where we want to get to. We're not there yet. And the only way that we can really get there is to really go all in on something like crypto. You know, in 10 years' time, where do you think crypto is going to be? Where do you think Bitcoin is going to be with just 21 million Bitcoin ever in the history of mankind and the future history of mankind? Where do you think Bitcoin is going to be? million pounds? Two million? And it's ridiculous that we haven't bought into it more as a species. Just where do you think it's going to happen? It's fairly obvious. I think it's fairly obvious, right? I think from a cryptocurrency point of view, and obviously not all of them will survive, where do you think we're going to be in 10 years' time, 20 years' time, 30 years' time? And Bitcoin's like a billion. You're like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's got all this potential to have this growth. And yet people are going around for short-term gains for their ego to buy these nice cars. And they're not even buying them. They're just renting them. And the money that they're generating to rent these cars comes from their ability to go to work or their ability to run a business. And running a business for most people means they have to go to the business to run it. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be tied down by a business, and we are to some extent, but the cash that we generate from that business goes into buying more assets, not into buying liabilities such as nice cars and that kind of thing. Now, all said and done, don't get me wrong, I like staying in nice hotels, I also like driving nice cars. And so we're in this predicament. Which way do we go? Do we go this way and strip it all out? Do we go this way and just buy a, you know, a nice Lambo? Do we, um, you know, the Lamborghini Urus, I think it's called. It's a beautiful looking 4x4. And I, I could never, I, well, I don't think I could, if we had 14 billion pounds in the bank, could I really go spend quarter million pounds on a, on a four-wheel drive Lamborghini? I mean, imagine all the problems that you're going to have with that car. And we live in Spain, no one cares about cars anyway. This is the other thing, which is really funny. It's only in England. What car are you driving? Well, does it really matter? How many hours do you work? You know, I work less than, I don't know what I work, maybe four hours a week? Between four and ten hours a week, I would say. Well, yeah, but what car do you drive? Yeah, but it's irrelevant what car you drive if you're not working any hours. That's the new rich. That's the new wealthy, as far as I'm concerned. But... I'm still English and I'm still from Britain and we still have our ego attached to uh, driving nice cars or buying speedboats or I don't know what that is about. I don't know why we do that uh, as, a, as, a, as a, not a species, but as a, as a culture in the UK. I don't know why cars are so important for people to demonstrate their wealth and actually with cars, people aren't demonstrating their wealth, they're demonstrating their ability to get credit, which is ridiculous. And a nice £100,000 Lamborghini isn't wealth. Generating £100,000 a year from your property, um, free and clear, that's wealth. Because you're going to do that till the day you die in 50 years' time or you know, 60 years' time, whatever that's going to be. Your ability to generate cash and constantly generate cash. Your ability to get credit to buy a Lamborghini that's going to cost you, you know, I don't know, a thousand pound a month or 1500 a month over the next four years. And you don't even own the damn thing. I just have massive issues around stuff like that. And, you know, I'm still in this pattern because I'm British. I've got to have a nice car. I can't be seen with a car that that, you know, doesn't represent your value. I don't even know what that means anymore. If you turn up in a Vol Volvo, is that representing your values? If you turn up in a Dacia Duster, is that re representing your values? If you turn up in a Porsche 911 convertible, does that represent your values? I don't even know what those values are from a financial point of view. Um, one of the cars I had, which I loved, by the way, was a Nissan X-Trail, one of the older shapes, not the newer shape. And I'm like, maybe we just go get a newer shape X-Trail, but even that's 15 grand. And I'm like, £15,000 put into cryptocurrency for the next 15 months, dollar cost averaging. Boy, that's going to get me an amazing return, 45, 60,000 over the next 10 years, easily, easily, I reckon. And yet we don't do it. I've seen people and they've got no money and they are literally struggling for money. And so do you know what they do? They go out and buy a nice Range Rover so that they look like they're earning money. And they've got no money. 
And we're having, the money that we do get, we're having to work and generate income from their business. And we're working 60, 70 hours a week. We're stressed like you won't believe. They're on a, ver on a um, what's the word? verge of divorce. We never see the kids. The health is going down. Uh, their mental well-being is being affected. All so that they can look like they're doing really well. And it's just, it's crazy, it's just crazy. I, I've got a friend of mine, he lives in Portugal, uh, and he's got he's got a lot more properties than I have, and he's doing very well for himself. And we were actually, our competition about wealth was who drives the shittest car. Uh, and he won by a, <laughs> by a mile, uh, because his car was a van, uh, and it's been filled that many times. If you stuck magnets on it, it would all just fall off, because it was just a rust bucket. And um, he literally was just driving this piece of junk. And he loved driving this piece of junk because it just didn't matter. It, you know, it just didn't have this connection to having to make sure that he was earning or demonstrating, I should say, his wealth. Because he could wake up tomorrow and go buy a house for cash if that's what he wanted to do. And that's what he does do. He goes to auctions and he sells at auctions and he buys loads of properties and... He's always doing deals. That's how he gets his kicks, not by driving Lambos and that kind of thing. Anyway, look, I hope that's useful for you, and uh, we'll catch up with you on the next video. My name's Dan Lotter. Take care.